Welcome to this mini series where we'll be exploring action research more in details. Action research is known by many other names, including participatory research, collaborative inquiry, emancipatory research, action learning, but all are variations on the theme. Put simply, action research is learning by doing. A group of people identify a problem, do something to resolve it, see how successful their efforts were, and if not satisfied, try again. One definition also of action research is by Gilmore, who says action research aims to contribute both to the practical concerns of people in an immediate problematic situation and to further the goals of social science simultaneously. This means there is a dual commitment in action research to study a system and at the same time to collaborate with members of the system in trying to change it in what is together regarded and a desirable direction. Action research is a research method that aims to simultaneously investigate and solve an issue. In other words, action research conducts research and takes action at the same time. This term was first coined by MIT professor Kurt Lewin. What separates this type of research from general professional practices, consulting or daily problem solving is the emphasis on scientific study, which is to say the researcher studies the problem systematically and ensures the intervention is informed by theoretical considerations. Much of the researcher's time is spent on refining the methodological tools to suit the exigencies of the situation and on collecting, analyzing and presenting data on an ongoing cyclical basis. Several attributes separate action research from other types of research. Primary is its focus on turning the people involved into researchers too. People learn best and more willingly apply what they have learned when they do it themselves. It also has a social dimension. The research takes place in real world situations and aims to solve real problems. Finally, the initiating researcher, unlike in other disciplines, makes no attempt to remain objective, but openly acknowledges their bias to the other participants. Stephen Chemis has developed a simple model of the cyclical nature of the typical action research process. As you can see in this picture, each cycle has four steps. Plan, act, observe and reflect. Sussman in 1983 
gives a somewhat more elaborate listing. He distinguishes five phases to be conducted within each research cycle. Initially, a problem is identified and data is collected for a more detailed diagnosis. This is followed by a collective postulation of several possible solutions, from which a single plan of action emerges and is implemented. Data on the results of the intervention are collected and analyzed, and the fundings are interpreted in light of how successful the action has been. At this point, the problem is reassessed and the process begins another cycle. This problem, this process continues until the problem is resolved. Action research is used in real situations rather than in experimental studies, since its primary focus is on solving real problems. It can, however, be used by social scientists for pilot research, especially when the situation is too ambiguous to frame a precise research question. Mostly, though, in accordance with its principles, it is chosen when circumstances require flexibility, the involvement of the people in the research, or change must take place quickly. It is often the case that those who apply this research approach are practitioners who wish to improve understanding of their practice, social change activists trying to mount an action campaign, or more likely academics who have been invited into an organization by decision makers aware of a problem requiring action research, but lacking the, the methodological knowledge to deal with it. Action research is often reflected in three action research models. Operational, sometimes also called technical, collaboration and critical reflection. Operational action research is usually visualized like a spiral following a series of steps, such as planning, acting, observing, reflecting. Collaboration action research is more community-based, focused on building a network of similar individuals and compiling learnings from iterated feedback cycles. Critical reflection action research serves to contextualize systemic processes that are already ongoing. Example, working retroactively to analyze existing school systems by questioning why certain practices were put into place and developed by the way they did. Action research differs sharply from other types of research in that it seeks to produce actionable processes over the course of the research, rather than contributing to existing knowledge or drawing conclusions from datasets. In this way, action research is formative and not summative, and is conducted in an ongoing, iterative way.
in this table, we can see some differences between action research and traditional research. If we start with the action research, we see that the purpose is to solve immediate problems and improve existing systems. In traditional research, instead, the purpose is to draw conclusions from the data, advancing existing knowledge and also trying to provide generalizable and reliable fundings. If we look at the context, action research is reactive, derived from the surroundings, and usually it's not theoretical in nature. Whereas traditional research is focused on crafting strong hypotheses and seeking causal relationships between variables. It also tries to derive from theory. So action research is more practical, the significance is more practical, whereas in the traditional research the significance is more statistical. Some advantages of using action research are action research is highly adaptable, allowing researchers to mold their analysis to their individual needs and implement practical individual level changes. Action research can also be very empowering, informing social change and allowing participants to effect that change in ways meaningful to their communities. Action research also provides an immediate and actionable path forward for solving issues rather than suggesting complicated long-term solutions rooted in complex data. There are also some disadvantages. Due to their flexibility, action research studies have very limited generalizability and are very difficult to replicate. They are often not considered theoretically rigorous due to the power the researcher holds in drawing conclusions. Action research can be complicated to structure in an ethical manner. Participants may feel pressured to participate or to participate in a certain way. And finally, action research is at high risk for research biases, such as selection bias, social desirability bias, or other types of cognitive biases. Because action research is carried out in real-world circumstances and involves close and open communication among the people involved, the researchers must pay close attention to ethical considerations in the conduct of their work. Winter in 1996 made a list of principles that every researcher has to consider. Make sure that the relevant persons, committees and authorities have been consulted and that the principles guiding the work are accepted in advance by all. All participants must be allowed to influence the work and the wishes of those who do not wish to participate must be respected. The development of the work must remain visible and open to suggestions from others. 
Permission must be obtained before making observations or examining documents produced for other purposes. Descriptions of others' work and points of view must be negotiated with those concerned before being published. The researcher must accept responsibility for maintaining confidentiality. To this might be added several more points. Well, like decisions made about the direction of the research and the probable outcomes are collective. Researchers are explicit about the nature of the research process from the beginning, including all personal biases and interests. There is equal access to information generated by the process for all participants. And the outside researcher and the initial design team must create a process that minimizes the opportunities for involvement of all participants. Here you can see some references and also some interesting readings to help you learning more on action research. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more on action research methodology and I look forward to meeting you all very soon. Goodbye.